Oh, boys and girls, the wait is over. FM22 Xbox Edition is here. And not only that, it is day one on Xbox Game Pass. So if you have Xbox Game Pass, you can now download either the Xbox version on your Xbox console, or you can download the Xbox version via Xbox for PC. And it's basically what FM Touch was last year. It isn't always going to be this complicated. Or if you're just a PC xbox game pass user you can actually download the full pc version to get as well which is the version you've seen me play the pc version that's in game pass too so whether you're looking for the pc version or the xbox exclusive version they're both on game pass day one um i've got the xbox edition downloaded now onto my xbox series s we're gonna have a look at it i've even got my fm21 controller for come on xbox Probably football manager whoever sent me this last year Where's, where's my new one? Absolutely distraught. What I do have for you is a copy of the game giveaway. So if you don't have Xbox Game Pass, but you do have an Xbox console, watch this space. I'll be telling you at the end how you can win a copy of Football Manager 2022 Xbox Edition. Should we get on with it? Hello, folks, and welcome to my first look at the FM22 Xbox Edition. As mentioned before, I'm playing on Xbox Series S. So if you've got an X, expect slightly better performance. If you're on an Xbox One, expect slightly worse performance. Just want to let you know what we're playing on here. If you are excited for the new game on Xbox, please make sure you give the video a nice big thumbs up. It really helps me out, and I'd appreciate that. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, turn your notifications on, all that good stuff. There's going to be a gazillion Football Manager videos coming out on the channel over the next couple of days. Be part of the gazillion. You know you want to. So this is the screen that you are met with when you find yourself in FM in the FM22 Xbox edition for the first time. As with last year, you have options about how you control the game. Um, I'm using the controller just to show you how it controls with a controller because I think this is how most people are going to play the console version. But you can plug keyboard and mouse into your xbox and play the traditional way if you want to so be aware if this looks clunky at times which it probably will it's football manager on a controller you do have the option to plug a keyboard and mouse in if you want to you also have the option to switch between how your left stick works at the moment i've got it set up so that it's um it's just selecting whole areas like moving from box to box i've got a sore throat i apologize there's nothing i can do about the the croaking of my voice. But if you hold the left stick down, um, it switches so that you've actually got a traditional mouse pointer that you can then move around the screen as you normally would. So two options of how you want to do it. I'm going to leave it on this for now, but I might well end up switching depending on which one feels most comfortable. What I am going to do is have a look at what is new in the FM22 Xbox edition. Because if you've not paid any attention to any of the Football Manager announcement stuff, this is the stuff that you want to know. So amongst the myriad of tiny little new features that will be hidden about the game, and you'll discover them as you go, the four headline new features for the Xbox edition of the game are the Data Hub, which is new across the entire line of Football Manager games. And I mean, if you're into data, you can just properly obsess over this kind of stuff. The Data Hub is a whole new world of numbers. If you thought this was a spreadsheet game before you ain't seen nothing yet and the increased match authenticity translating that into english they've improved some of the match ai and the animation stuff and the match engine is the best one they've ever done it really is a big improvement on what they've done last year i have played a lot of fm22 already largely because the match engine just it feels better it's very difficult to put into words why it just feels better. News effects, as it says there on screen, gives you instant feedback on your interactions uh, with the press and decisions that you make in games so you can better manage morale in game. Morale is big in FM22 in the previous touch versions of the game and the Xbox version of the game last year. It wasn't reflected in the same way it is in the main game. It's still not done exactly the same way, but it is, it is there. Yeah, the morale is important now, whereas you could almost get away with not worrying about morale in the Xbox version last year, I think. Um, and also, they've revamped manager creation. So that's what we're going to go and have a little look at now. These are your game modes that you can use. Um, so I, like, I know a lot of you are going to jump straight into a career. You can do create a club as before. Um, challenge mode is in there. Um, it's likely going to be the, all the same challenges that have been in the touch versions for a long time. So we just flick through those. Plenty of challenges for you to get your teeth into as time goes on. Um, you've also got online. I know a lot of people played 
Football Manager online on the Xbox last year. You can do that again. Fantasy Draft is in the game as well. And also Versus Mode if you just want to go against your mates without the commitment of an online career. We're just going to start a normal career mode. Um, we're going to pick one of the licensed leagues, I think, because we want to use all the fancy graphics. So you can see the difference in the controls here. Um, the, the left stick moves you between these different groups of things that you can select. And then within those, you switch to the D-pad that moves you around within that. Alternatively, you can just have a pointer on if you want to have a pointer on. So um, I think I am going to keep it this way. Because once you're used to it, I think this is actually quite a, a fluid way to control what you're doing. So let's... Uh, we're going to go to Germany because Germany, we know, is fully licensed and it just looks cool. It looks really cool being fully licensed. Um, and because I want to manage Erling Haaland, we'll go to Dortmund because why wouldn't you want to manage Erling Haaland at the start of the game? You can then have a quick start or do advanced setup. We're going to advanced setup to see what our options are in here. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to start as manager of Dortmund. You can then pick which nations you have loaded um i think the limits on nations is different depending on which version of the xbox you've got it says if you want it to be compatible with xbox one family of consoles you need fewer than five nations um which is fine we're going to have fewer than five but uh, we're not going to load loads up but you could load up uh, several of these we could add like a few other as well and it will still run i think we'll get a message yeah a warning message saying if we go over five uh, we wouldn't be able to play on an Xbox One, but it looks like the Xbox Series S that I'm on doesn't have that problem. And um, we're going to start the game. And I'm interested to see how quickly it sets up a new game on the Series S. I won't I won't sit here watching it forever if it looks like it's going to take a long time, but I'm kind of hoping it'll just be nice and snappy. This is a the console game, after all. We want we want nice and snappy. I'll just have a sip of my honey and lemon tea. Is this it? That is pretty snappy, to be fair. Didn't even get a sip of the, the throat saver. Right, I'll just pop my name in with the Xbox standard uh, keypad stuff that you have. Again, if you've got a keyboard and mouse, uh, you can type all this in yourself on your keyboard. You can just plug it straight into your Xbox. I, uh, I use a wireless keyboard with my PC, which is in front of me, and I don't want to find the dongle at the back of it, which is why I've not bothered to plug mine in, because to be fair, it's fine on the controller. And, I mean, I mainly play Football Manager on PC. As you know, it's my job. I play Football Manager every day. I'm not likely to sit at this desk playing the Xbox version, ever. If I'm playing the Xbox version, I'm going to be sat on my sofa. And if I'm sat on my sofa, I'm going to be using one of these, not a keyboard and mouse. I'm going to ask it not to teach me about the key concepts because I'd like to think I know what I'm doing. If you're new to the game, I'd suggest you keep that on. Um, I'm just going to randomise my body as well. We don't need to mess around too much with this, but you can see you can do quite a lot more customization stuff than you were able to. Last year, you can switch between being male and female. Um, loads of different preset faces, where you can adjust all of those as well. Height, weight, that kind of thing. Um, you can adjust your face in some insane detail. This is what it means by new customization options. And you can even have a shirt with no tie now, which, I mean, what have we become if we're having shirts with no tie? But you can just keep customizing that until you're happy with a of an option that suits you. I mean, this is this some options. Next time I get that coat, I'm keeping the coat. Give me the coat. Yeah, that'll do. What a lovely coat. Um, yeah, we'll have that. So that can be me. And I am the new manager of Dortmund. Continue is just on the right trigger. So it's really easy just to hit continue, move through, and uh, just keep skipping through all of these options. Yes, we will do a save. You can tell I'm a PC player, mainly because I had to look at the controller there to see which one was the Y button, so I knew which one to press. And we are into the inbox, which I think we can do the context navigation menu. Yeah, so you have the navigation menu with the left trigger. You can make pop up and disappear on that side. And then on here, we have the actions menu, which when you're hovering over something, it'll tell you what actions you can do. Um, you can, yeah, so we can get the list of inbox there. Does this scroll through? I know that, right? The triggers at the top move between those different things. So how do we look at the next message in our inbox? Is it just a case of, do we click there to go to the next one? There you go. We can just scroll through there. And again, if I stick the pointer on, I can then say yes. Apply those recommendations to all. And you can do it this way if you want. Some people will do it this way. Loads of people on last year's video said to me, when I did it all without using the pointer, 
I cannot believe, cannot believe you didn't just use the pointer. It's so much easier with the pointer. For me, I still think it's easier doing it this way. So apparently we couldn't agree a contract with Zagadu. I'll see about that. What does Zagadu want? Because if you've watched my Arsenal save on the PC version that we've been doing over the last couple of weeks, you'll know I'm a big fan of Dan Axel Zagadu. So we can use the right trigger to move stuff around on there. Nice and easy. Let's just suggest these terms and see why we couldn't agree. We could. What was that? Why couldn't? I mean, easy. We've agreed that immediately. Um, and then Dahoud. Do we do we care about him? Do we care that we couldn't agree a contract with him? Let's um, let's just click on him and have a look at him. So we can go into reports for him again. You can you can scroll through at the top like that, or you can go and point at what you want. He's got four star potential. If he's got four four star potential, you absolutely want to be offering him a contract. So we'll just finalise the promises, get into the contract. Boom, contract done. Right, if we get the navigation menu on again, um, you can see that it looks, by and large, just like the full version of the game, but um, zoomed in a bit so that you can see it on your TV from the other side of the room, which is the whole idea um, of how they have things set up. The data hub you won't be able to use until you've played a few matches, so I won't be able to show you that in this video. If you want to see more of the data hub, I have got content on that on the channel of looking at it on PC. As far as I'm aware, it is pretty much the same. Um, so you can work out how to get the uh, the data hub, the data hub, the data hub, up and running from there. Um, and then tactics, we're all familiar with these tactic screens. You can pick, you can pick the tactic. We're certainly not going to use a preset. Um, should we just? I mean, how do we not? We're going to go and use the good old fashioned Gagan press, which will quick pick, and we don't want to see that again. And then we can, yeah, we just basically want a tactic that's going to be built around Erling Haaland. And I think that tactic looks like that's going to work quite well with Haaland. Because the thing we really want to do from here is have a look at the uh, the match engine in action. Interestingly, Team Report is still a separate tab on the Xbox version, which it's not on the PC version anymore. It's hidden within Squad now. So that's still the way it was on last year's game. If we just come down this list of stuff we've got in here. So staff is the simplified version that we've had on FM Touch for a few years. Um, and again, a simplified way of deciding who's going to do what. So if you don't want to do your own training, it looks like it's preset set up for backroom staff to do training. If you really want to do it, you can. I really don't. So we're going to leave that. Oh, I've got an achievement for fiddling with that. So I'm a tracksuit manager. I did it for a second and moved straight back. Um, but you can search for more staff up there as well training we're not really touching but it is the nice fm touch simplified version of it and of course it has highlighted for us that yusuf and makoko is there 16 years old so we might want to be aware if we're managing dortmund be aware that he exists he's probably going to end up quite good um what i am enjoying is the fact there's no lagging between these screens it's moving very nicely with the tutorials in there as well it's moving very nicely between all these screens on what is not the top of the range Xbox. Like I say, it's the Series S, the £250 one, not the top of the range one, but all of these screens are looking pretty clear. They're loading up nicely. What we really want to do is just get through to where we can see a match. We want to see the match engine in option. If you hit the continue button, actually, when you've got the inbox loaded, it just automatically moves you to your next inbox page as well, which is really cool. I think, I know the instinct is to get the, to get the mouse pointer on, I think in time, you'd pretty get pretty quickly get used to what the keyboard, not the keyboard, the controller shortcuts do. So for this one, if we want to accept the offer, we'd press Y, reject the offer, it's X. So, um, and again, everything, you don't have to keep moving around. We can say, yeah, just reject it, move to the next thing. And you can pretty quickly get into a rhythm. I know it's going to take some practice if you're used to the PC version. You can pretty quickly get into a rhythm where you can just kind of, move between these screens relatively quickly so we're just doing a little bit of a press conference and now we are going to get a match so we're just gonna we're just gonna quick pick this we just want to see the match engine in action on xbox now bear in mind if you're wearing headphones there might be game sound about to blow your ears out in fact let's see if we can turn game sound off in the preferences did i press the right button there go into preferences Perhaps that's not how you go into preferences. What do we think we press to get into preferences? Well, that doesn't work from that screen. 
just be aware. Take your headphones out for a second. There might be there might be noise. I will turn it off straight away. It'll be loud, probably. Might even not be noise. Where's my headphones? Just to pop my headphones on for a second, so it blows my eardrums out at the same time as blowing yours out. Um, maybe there's no noise. Excellent. Noise isn't on as standard. I imagine that's something you can turn on if you want to. We're getting a tutorial going on as well. Um, we don't want a tutorial, so we can just exit the tutorial, hit the trigger, and get back into the action. So if we want to just pause that for a second and just adjust this stuff so that it looks the same way it does on the PC version for me, really. So we want the TV camera, which we want to be quite low, quite zoomed in. We want key highlights, a little bit faster, and then behind goal for replays. So this is how I have things set up on the PC version. And there we have it. We have Football Manager up and running. These kits clash a little bit, don't they? That's not ideal. But all in all, it looks like it's running quite nicely, quite smoothly. I am, I am pleasantly surprised by how smoothly it's running. When I was doing this time last year, I didn't have the Series S yet. I don't know that anybody did. Was the Series S out last year? I don't remember when it was released. So I was doing this last year on an Xbox One, and um, it wasn't quite this smooth. Now, I don't know if that's because I've upgraded to the next-gen console, so it's going to look a little bit better, or whether it's uh, an indication that the game has got that bit better since last year. As you can see, Erling Haaland looking pretty good early on, as you would expect, uh, putting us 1-0 up against a team. I didn't even know who we were playing. JBK. Who is JBK? Did it say we were in Korea or something? On a, I guess on a pre-season tour. So we are probably going to rack up a few goals in this. So I might not be showing you the entire match in the interest of getting this this video out in a timely manner this evening. It's 20 past eight. The game came out at eight o'clock. It's 20 past eight as this is happening. I'm hoping to get the video out for nine. So if this goes on to like four or five goals, we might just, we might just skip it and end the video in the interest of getting it out because I want to be able to get this out as early as possible so that you know how you can win your copy of the game more than anything. Because normally, normally, I tell you at the start of the video, but this is your award, making it all this way through if you want to win a copy of the game. Um, all you need to do is head over to Twitter, find the tweet where I've announced that this video that this video is out, and retweet it. It is as simple as that. And then at some point over the next day or two, I'll go over there, use one of these retweet picker things that you can find on the internet, and whichever one is randomly selected will get a code for the Xbox version of the game in their DMs. So obviously only enter if you've got an Xbox, because it is the console version I've got, rather than the PC version on Xbox, which that's not going to get confusing, I'm sure. But yeah, I will, uh, I will I'll, I'll, I'll hide the link to the actual tweet that I want you to retweet in the description of the video, so don't worry. No one reads the description of videos, so you're still getting rewarded for being in here towards the end of the video. I think we'll, uh, we'll watch one more goal, because Haaland is just absolutely scoring for fun. They've actually made a save here. But Erling Haaland, here's my hot tip for the start of FM22 on Xbox. Erling Haaland, quite good. Um, he was the first player that we identified as quite good on the PC version. And what do you know? He's quite good at Xbox as well. Who'd have thought? I mean, that one probably should have gone in. But I don't know if you're noticing some of the slightly improved animations that we've got in the match engine there. It just all runs a little bit smoother and I think the more it's one of those things where the more you play it the more things you start to notice and the more you appreciate um how things are moving in the right direction um it's obviously not going to look like certain triple a football games if you're expecting that ever yeah I think you're, you're probably barking up the wrong tree you're expecting the wrong thing out of football manager but as a management game I think it it does everything we need it to do we're actually starting to see I mean it's really obvious 20 minutes in, just how good Erling Haaland is. And we can see the movement he's doing. We can see how good his finishing is on that left foot. It's it's impressive. I am I am suitably impressed. But I think I am going to wrap this video up here because as you can note out here, my voice is an absolute mess. Um, I was actually in bed having an evening nap when the when I when I got the message that this was dropping. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna get this edited and get back into bed, I think. Unless the mobile version comes out tonight too, in which case you'll see an even croakier, even more tired version of me a little bit later on this evening with the mobile and or Switch versions, which I'm definitely going to have a first look at as well. And don't forget, of course, tomorrow, four o'clock, 
we have got the first episode of non League to Legend, my my full football manager save, the first proper save that we're going to get started on this year. So lots of good stuff to come out and come over the next few days. If you have enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on it for me. Um, it'll make me feel better for dragging myself out of bed when I feel poorly. I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. Even if you don't normally do, I'd really appreciate one on this video. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching. Are we going to concede a goal here? We didn't. Excellent stuff. Thanks for watching, folks.